So we will <coughs> we'll start <coughs> today's interactive session. So this interactive session is uh, to explain all the practices and the sequences for the next month. <coughs> so <coughs> we'll start with the prayer. So you can sit in convenient position initially, keeping the legs crossed, keeping the back straight. Then we start with the prayer. So for the prayer, inhale, take both the arms over the head, straight up, exhale to heart center. Closing the eyes, take an in-breath. straight up through the center. Exhale, hands down. So that is the <coughs> starting prayer for this month. Now we'll do the loosening practices. So this month, the loosening practices are a little mixed. So it will be like some of the practices from standing, some from sitting, and some in the lying down position. These are the Loosening practices which are getting mixed and uh, practice this month. So for that, <coughs> we'll come to standing position. So I hope everybody can hear me and everybody can see me also. So this is the first thing that you should do while arranging your camera. See what I have done is when I arranged my mat, I ensured that the laptop is about six, eight feet away from the mat. So what is happening? Now you can see my full height and the full length of the mat is visible. So whenever you attend an online class, ensure that your mat is fully visible and your standing height. It's okay when you lift the arm, the uh, hand may go outside the uh, purview of the camera. That's fine. So it doesn't go too many times, right? So try to keep it in such a way and the light falling on you not falling away from you. Okay, try to keep it like that. So that is important. So that the teacher can observe what you're doing is right or wrong and correct yourself. So that's important. <clears throat> then we start with the loosening practices. So first we do a little slow jogging. Little slow jogging we can do. As of now, try to observe more than doing. I want you to observe and take up all the practices. Then we do hand to heel to hand jogging like this. So trying to touch the heel on the hand backwards. And then again slow running. So that completes the jogging practice. So initially all the loosenings will be done in standing. So we again start with the wrist. Arms in front, fist close, rotate the wrist. One, two, three, four, <coughs> five, reverse. One, two, three, four, five, hands on shoulder. So these are common with the last month. Rotate your shoulders. One, two, three, Four, five, change, one, two, three, four, one more round, 
five. Putting the hands down, arm rotations. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five. So the arm loosening is over. Catching the waist, we go to the hip rotation. So gently push the hip forward, rotate the hip. One. Two, three, four, five. Change. One, two. See how I'm pushing the hips. Three. I mean, taking to the back also. <clears throat> four. One more round. Five. After doing that, I join the legs. Sorry, in the same position, I bend back and bend forward. So I'm just turning so that you can see. Ideally, you are supposed to do it in the same direction. There is no need to turn. So I inhale. So you can see, I keep the thumbs close to each other. Don't keep your hands like this. Keep your thumbs close to each other and very close. Don't spread it. Keep it close. So like that. Inhale, keeping the legs away. If you keep the legs like this, you can't bend. It will only hurt your back. So the leg should be almost shoulder distance. See the shoulder, see the leg. So almost shoulder distance has to come. Inhaling, bend back. Exhale. Looking at the navel. Inhale. Exhale. Look to navel, finally. <clears throat> Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, fourth one. Deeper. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. And come back. So we finish the hip. Then, while exhaling, join the feet, hands on the knee. Bending the knee slightly forward. Rotate the knee. One. Two. Three, see how I'm taking to the side also. Four, five, <clears throat> change. One, two, three, four, and five. Knees are over. Then I stand up. So there is a difference. Last month we used to do something else. So all those are little, little changed this month. Then catch the waist, take the left leg forward, rotate. One, Observing. Two, see the circles that I'm making. Three, taking up side and all. Four, five, reverse. One, two, three, four, five. Then we drop it. There's a difference, okay? Last month it was different. Then change. One, two, three, four, Five, change. One, two. When I talk, I'm not able to breathe properly. Three, it's quite natural. Four, five. So we finished the ankle joint. Now, there are some new listening practices which are coming in. You have to observe and practice along with the group. <clears throat> so we add something called front lunging. Lunging forward. So coming to the center of the mat first. In here, Take the left leg forward. Approximately four feet distance. The distance is important. Approximately three to four feet. Catching the waist. Exhale, bend both the knees and make a lunging position. Bending both the knees. Then don't touch the ground. Inhale. Like that. Exhale. Front lunging. <clears throat> Inhale. Exhale. So you can lift the back heel. Inhale, give it back. Exhale, do whatever possible. Inhale. One more time. Exhale. So this, this stretches. Inhale. Just walk back with an exhalation. Okay? Now take the other leg forward with an inhalation. Inhale. Exhale. Lunging. Inhale. Two. 
up three up try to balance four up and strengthen the knee thigh now and last one five and up and just walk inside so so that's another loose knee practice for the legs including the hamstrings quadriceps calf muscles knee and all so that is front lunging then we do side lunging so i come to the front again in say in here spread your legs okay just spread your legs first then bring the arms in front parallel to the ground then here take an inhalation exhale lunge to the left little bend in here exhale inhale exhale inhale try not to lean forward exhale inhale one more time exhale inhale gradually deepen it exhale and inhale exhale you can keep your catch your waist just walk inside so that's called side lunging so what are we did with additional to last month we did forward lunging which you should be doing straight like this i turned because i wanted to show you then side lunging so these are the two new uh, uh, loosening practices which have been added this month and then comes <clears throat> after doing that just relax and then we have to sit down from that position so i sit down <clears throat> sit down in shitalagandasa so all the standing reasoning is over i am spending additional time so that you get to know all the things okay then after sitting the first thing that we will do is a uh, neck rotation so i put the chin on chest then rotate the neck one all the sides two So I'm doing everything because I need to get loosened. Otherwise, I cannot do the asanas. Four. One more round. Five. So I stop at the place where I started. Then start again. One. I try to qualify the rotation. Two. Inhale. And exhale. See, I can see the feel the stretch here. Three sides of the neck. Take all the sides. For at the same time, I'm trying to enjoy. In one more circle. Five. And take all the sides. So that loosening is completed. Now, another new loosening practice called Bhumi Namana Asana. Bhumi means earth. Namana means to go, going to the earth. So that is also loosening practice, a dynamic asana. So how do I do that? So inhale, take the arms in front. Parallel to each other, and parallel to the ground. Exhale, twisting the body, uh, go to the left, and try to touch the forehead and the back. So twisting the body and bending backwards. Inhale, come up. Do one more time. Exhale, bend right. So I try to touch the uh, forehead and the mat. Inhale, up. Exhale, left. So the right hand will come here. Left hand will go back like that. Trying to twist it now. Inhale three times each. Exhale. Inhale. It's okay. Let the leg leg lift up. No problem. One more. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, come up and exhale. Relax. So that is another new. Loosening practice. So, neck rotation and Bhuvan Namaskara will be done in sitting position. Then we go to lying down position. So we lie down. So we do cycling, cycle crunches, then threading the needle and uh, elbow plank. I hope you can see me. Yeah. So I lie down in supine position on my back. Keep the keep the legs together, hands close to the body. Then we here take both the legs up 90 degree. Only legs. 
then start citing in that position. One, two, like that, yeah. Three, forward cycling. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now change the direction. One, I'm sorry. We have change the direction to backward cycling. One, <clears throat> two, three, ten times back also. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So when I finish the these are bent, then the exhale is over. Now inhaling, interlock the fingers behind the head and lift the head a little. Lift, lift the head. On exhalation, touch the left elbow on the right knee. Then the right. Three, two, three, three. Like that. Four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven. Eight side by side approaches. Eight, nine, and ten. Then inhale, head down. Exhale, head down, and release the legs to Chavasana position. So that is for the stomach strengthening and loosening practice of the shoulders, legs, and all. Then turn around. So inhaling, take the right arm. Over the head and bend the left leg. For the exhalation, I turn. Ground. Now, pressing the hand on the floor, inhale, come to cat position. Okay. So after cat position, keep the knees a little apart, standing toes. We do uh, threading the needle. That's another loosening practice. Threading the needle. I'm turning like this because you can see me, and I have a little space. So you are supposed to do facing the same mat direction. Threading the needle, I'm going to show you now. Inhale, take the left hand, hand up. Look at the hand, straight up. Exhale, you know this is the needle, hole of the needle. Exhale, thread the needle. So insert the hand between the right arm, right leg. And put the head down like that. Then inhale up, exhale. Inhale up, <clears throat> exhale. Inhale four, threading the needle. Exhale. One more time. Inhale and exhale. Now inhale up, exhale down. Inhale other hand up. Exhale. Try to keep the head down. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Lift the hand. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale up. And exhale down. So we did it. Threading the needle. From that position, we go to elbow plank. So I turned because I want to show you. So I reached with an exhalation. I inhale here first. And then exhale, keep the elbows down, interlock the fingers. You have to make a fist with the both the hands. Or you can make a cup shape also. So I go down with an exhalation. <clears throat> then inhale, lift the knees up. Just lift the knees up. On the exhalation, adjust the leg and come to plank, elbow plank. Stay there. So that's called the elbow plank. One, two, three, ten numbers. Four, five. Try not to lift the back. Three, don't put like this. Keep it straight. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale, knee down. Come to cat position. Say, take the knee back, mountain position. 
Now, just stay for a while here. One, two, three. Look to navel. Four normal breathing. Five. Inhale. Step forward. Head up. Exhale. Head down. Inhale. Take the arms over your head. Join it. Look at your thumb. Exhale. Hands down. We return back to standing position. <clears throat> so that completes listening practices. Any doubts in what we did? So this is the listening practice for this month. So it's a mix of many things, starting from standing listening, sitting listening, supine listening, and uh, uh, prone position listening. Yeah. Any clarification you can ask. Otherwise, I go to next. No doubts. So we come to the asanas of the month, starting with Parshutanasana. We have the asanas. So before that, we do the Surya Namaskar. This month it is Swami Vivekananda Surya Namaskar, which has got two Shashank asanas will come. So I will do that. Coming to the front of the mat. So prayer I am not doing because all of you the same the same prayers continues for all Surya Namaskar. So this one is a little short for me, so I may, I may not be taking the hand properly. Samastiti. <clears throat> Inhale, arms over the head. Exhale, heart center. I will show few rounds. A come. Inhale, bend back. D. Exhale, bend forward. Three. Inhale, left leg back. Chin up. See the chin up. Chaturvari. Exhale. High back. Pancha. Inhale, knee down. Exhale, sit back. Shun. Inhale, come up on the knee. Standing toe. Exhale, Ashtanga Namaskar. Sarta. Inhale, chest up. Put in forward. Ashta. Exhale, lift the back. Lower. Inhale, knee down together. Exhale, sit back. Desha. Inhale, left leg forward. Eka Adesha. And Dua Adesha. Samastiti. Mantra will come, then second round. He will come. So this time I will not talk. Observe how I match the breathing with the uh, movement. Then the mantra comes. So did you, I hope you were able to hear the sound of my breathing and how I was trying to distribute the movement within the time. So some of the uh, critical points that I would like to say is, especially while going down in that uh, Ashtanga Namaskara and coming up. So when you go down in that, from here, so, uh, when you go down, you have to stand here and go down. So, if I have 
at the moment. So I'm trying to distribute. I'm not suddenly going down. No. So I'm resisting the weight and going down against the pressure of the hand. So these are all important things that you should learn. Similarly, when I come up, slip the toes from here, then stay in the ground. See, the head came last. Initially, the chin out was on the chest like this, like, like a cobra. Then the last moment the head comes up. So I come up with that rhythm of movement, along with the breath. So the breath does not finish before the movement is over. And vice versa. The movement does not finish before the breath is over. Both are at the, starting at the same time, ending at the same time. All the movements, whatever I made just now, all the movements start at the start of the breath and finish at the end of the breath. And where whatever timing has been given, we have to make that distribute the movement and the breath with the timing. So these are all important things. So that was Surya Namaskara. Any doubts on Surya Namaskara or the listening practices which I explained? If there are doubts, you have to speak up so that I can understand. If not, good, I will do standing asanas. Tashutanasana, Virabhadrasana, Uttitasana, Padangushtasana, Utkatasana. Four asanas, one sequence. So I will do all the four and then we will talk. Samasthiti. First one is Tashutanasana. Uh, so I will start from my left side. Many of you have done these asanas. Ekam, inhale, take right leg out three feet. Catching the waist. D, exhale and catch the elbow. So I interlock the elbow here. Pini, inhale, turn the feet and the body towards the right side. And Chatwari, exhale. I purposely stopped here because just to demonstrate how I control my own uh, movements. Looking at the toe, I start inhaling. While exhaling further. One. Looking at the toe. Two, one more breath. Three, pancha. Same direction. Exhale, turn to front. Leg will turn, body will turn. Inhale, other side. And exhale. Start inhaling. So I take the same three breaths here. Then, from there, I again come back. Chatwari. Pancha, turn. Inhale, catch the waist. And exhale, walk left. No break. Viravadra, inhale. Now see the distance. How much was it earlier? It was here. Sorry, Parshotanasana is done at three feet distance. You can see there is a tile. Tile is two feet. So I keep the feet a little extra from that so that three feet is obtained. Whereas when you do need a bit, it has to go further. It has to go to almost four and a half feet. So it has to go this spread. Otherwise, the asana will be lost. So this is a <clears throat> inhalation. Now exhale and turn the leg and the body also turn. See the distance between the legs. Inhale, take the arms up. <clears throat> and then exhale bend the right leg. You see, when I bend the right leg, see the position of the thigh. Why this came is because of the length of the leg. You can see the chest is bulging back straight, the thigh is tight, and the distance is correct. Why? Because of four feet distance it came. Some people they do only this much. So these are all the mistakes that you do. Now when you do this, how do you, it will come? See, see the angle of the shin bone? It went forward. Some people will stay there only. You look at the grass now. So these are all, you have to be aware. It's okay if there's a difficulty, I'm fine. So 
It's okay, but you should be aware that what is the correct way to do it and how to use their day by day. So that, so keeping that leg is important. You saw that this knee will not bend. The body will be straight up and looking at the thumb. And then after three breaths, inhale, leg straight, look that direction. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, turn. Exhale, other side. The same process. Inhale, arms up. Exhale. So first inhale, I have to look up. One. So like that, three breaths. So the angle of the leg. What is this angle? How did I measure this? With my mind. I did not look at the leg. I know because when I keep the leg, if it's correct, the angle will be coming correct. And the way the thigh bone digs into the pelvis, it makes me clear that that the angle is 90. Then inhale, straight leg. Exhale. Inhale, turn. Exhale, <coughs> walk to the... Ideally, you are supposed to jump forward. Like that. So from this position, like that you have to jump. So that is second asana. So now the two asanas, Parshottana asana, Viravadra asana. Then comes third one, Uttita Hasta Pada Angushta Asana, Samasthiti. Samasthiti is like this, not like this, you know. Like that, especially children, all these people are attending the class. Samasthiti means Samasthiti. Opening the chest, opening the shoulder, and standing straight. Any gap between the toe and head? Did you find? No, you will not find. Because my mind is ahead, where the leg like is. Uttita Pada Angushta Asana. Starting with the left leg. Ekam, inhale, bend the left leg. Cast the toe. <clears throat> On the exhale, just straighten it. That's all. Balance here. Did I lean? I did not. It's okay. Let it go a little sideways. One more breath. Inhaling, bend the leg. Exhale. See how the toe came, leg hand came. Right? Awareness. So, the same repeats on the other side. So, I'm not going to show that. So, what is important here is two things. One is looking at one point. If you don't look at that, for example, hold on. I look here. We're catching the leg. In the, then I look there. No. So that's where the mind shuffles. So looking at that point, steady Krishna now itself. Inhale. We are not looking at the leg only. Exhale. You saw that. So in advanced class, there is another step where you have to, I hope those are attending, you have to bring the chin down. And try to touch the chin on the knee. That is there. In this class, it's not there. Then in advanced class, it also goes to the side. I'm looking at the other side of the wall. Then inhale, come back. Exhale, chin on the knee. Inhale, release. And balance. Are you observing my breath? How are you in front of your chest? See how I returned. So all these have to work in the mind. <coughs> so Uttita Hastan, Padam Gushtasana, in the regular class, does not have the head going down neither side. Whereas in advance, I think Preeti and I will be attending, Bharat and all. So for them, with this Uttita Hastan, sideways will come. Then, Last asana I'm standing is Uttat asana. This is Sthiti. I'm turning because I want to show. I want to show you. Ekam inhale arms up, looking forward. Do exhale bend like a chair. I'm looking at the thumb. 
So the depth of the buttocks, the thigh is important. So try to sit as deep as possible. So don't sit here and all. Okay, it's fine to start with, but gradually try to increase the depth of your chair. Like that. After three breaths, inhale, stand up. Exhale, hands down. So that is Utkatasana, which is the last standing asana in the normal batch. Now, in uh, advanced, Garudasana will come in addition to these asanas and some of the asanas may be removed. So, Samasthiti, Garudasana, how to do that? Inhale, take one leg up. I'll show this leg first. On the exhalation, you will wrap the leg around the other leg. Wrap it and lock it at the back behind the calf. Then with an inhale, coil the arms. <coughs> like that. Good <coughs> asana. <coughs> and the exhale release. Then inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale. Samasthiti. So that is very asana in the advanced batch. So these are the four standing asanas which are there in the class next month. Any doubts on these four asanas? Any doubts you have to ask now? Garudasana, like which uh, the hand leg coordination can increase? Yeah, so if the right leg is on the top, when the right leg is on the top, and uh, the left hand should be on the top, left elbow. So that's the equalizer. Thank you. Yeah, when the right leg is bent and coiled around at that time, so you can see the toe has to come this side. Okay, and here the left elbow will come on the top, like that. Hmm. So it may not be able to coil the leg. So what you can do is just cross it, like this. Just cross it and try to balance. This is also fine. You don't have to put it fully backside. It's not that, but initially it might, may not lock also. Sir, I had a question on Garudasana. Yeah. Uh, basically, if I try to do it all in one go, I can do it. But if I try to set it to breath, like, you know, then it becomes difficult because the flexibility can help me achieve it. But the breath thing gets a problem. Like, I'll get disbalanced if I'll do the leg first coil and my hands are not there instantly. Yeah. The principle is same. So you uh, do what the breath allows you to do. That's all. You may be able to do um, the asanas without regulating the breath. But if you, that is a, what I'm telling you is it's a wrong bus to take. Because okay. what happens is you may be able to do and the tightness on the nerves and the, the, the stress levels that you get after the class will keep on increasing. It will never come down. So your breath is, is the one that calms the physical activity. As per principle, I never do an asana unless it's very tough asanas where you know, the chest is squeezed and you have like shalad asana. There is no place to breathe. The chest is down and the arms are pushing the stomachs. There is no way where expansion can happen. You know, it is very tough. So whereas this asana, the chest is fully free. The stomach is fully free. There is nothing that you can stop from breathing. So <clears throat> if you go, yeah, I like, appreciate your question. So with an inhale, right, take the leg up. So it's free to be. And exhale. Call it. Done. So I get that stability. Then in here. Okay. <clears throat> so how does that look like? The grace of action. So when you do this, children be like that. So the effect of the asana will not come into the mind and the body. Yes, the physical action may happen. But okay. you have to make that tendency at the bud. Okay. It's not, I'm, I'm answering you because there are a lot of people doing this. You are candid enough to ask that question straight in front. We appreciate that. So try to gradually 
come away from that <coughs> that uh, uh, tendency to bad physical action more than the uh, control of the breath and your stability of the uh, drishti now yeah yeah okay okay so that we come to any other questions on standing asanas otherwise i go to sitting okay it's only for few minutes another one hour we have with that we will we'll cover all of them then i come to sitting i hope my leg is also visible to you is the leg visible or not much yes sir okay so i do jana shirshasana jana means knee shirsha means head right face sideways so all these are adjustments to show you that's all in samasthiti so when you i come to samasthiti observe the straightness of the back the right shape you can see the natural shape of the the in the concave back comes in the lower back right to lift the chest and sit straight like that now i take an inhale here I'll show this leg. Exhale for the first leg. Now, did you see? Where is my ninety degree? My ninety degree is here. See, I'm. I hope I'm clear. This is zero. This is ninety degree. Where did the knee go? The knee went to one twenty degree, and the heel came up. See the heel? The heel came up. So the knee goes back, and the degree becomes one twenty. That's an exhalation. So I inhale first. With an exhalation, I fold up the leg. Then inhaling, lifting the arms, and the exhalation. So I'm using the I'm moving the mic so that I'm clear. So I cast the toe. Initially, I'm not putting the very down much. Inhaling, look at the toe. See the breath quality. One breath. Still looking at the door. Two breath. I'm feeling the deep lungs now. Three breaths are over. Pancha inhale now. The toe gets pointed. Shut. In the same side, I do pariyata. So my hand was like this. I turn the body and bring the shoulder this side. Catch the toe. That's an exhalation. You saw that position of the shoulder. It's not work for all of you, but this is the way to do it. That's an exhalation. And with the knee here, I will rotate the spine upward, <clears throat> looking up. Then exhale. Inhale. One. See the stomach movement. See the movement of the knee. Last one here for me. Try to maximize. Exit. Inhale. Evenly. And exit. Then inhale the leg fall. Exhale, fold the other leg, and do the same. So, same action on the other side. So, what are the asanas we did? Janu Shirsha asana, Tai Vakta Janu Shirsha asana. So, some of you may not be able to reach the leg only. This is also fine. Janu Shirsha asana. I am okay with this, provided you are in control and you are in the good breath. Then, same way when I twist. This is also fine. All these are fine. So you, you can even catch this hand and do like this. This this also will get a stretch. So these are the self judgments you have to make. So how much to do, how much not to do. How, but compromise should not be done on the knowledge. Your knowledge. Your breathing style, the stability of the movement, drishti, those you should not compromise. 
because they are the roads to reach there. If you don't take the right road, how will you reach the position? So don't miss the path. You may not reach the destination. One day or the other, you will reach. That's guaranteed. So follow the process, follow the steps, follow the breaths, drishti, and grace of practice. So jana shishasana, pranam jana shishasana, over. Now that was follow the ending. Now we go, go to the reverse ushtrasana. Ekam. Uh, before that, in advanced class, you have got uh, Kulmasana, Sukta Kulmasana. So I come to Samasthiti. <coughs> Kurma. What is the meaning of Kurma? Parkas. Samasthiti. Inhale. Spread the legs and two. Make two shallow mountains. It's one moment. So half from here. Inhale. Come to. From Samasthiti. On the exhale, insert the arms below the thigh. That's enough to start with. Then start inhaling here. On the exhale, go further. One. Inhale again. Exhale. One more breath. Looking at the front of the head now. Last exhale, I can bring it down. Let the back side is the back. Now, inhale, bend the knees up. On the exhalation, you have to take your hands back and catch the fingers at the back. I will show you from the side view so that you can see that. So I sit up, bend the knee, then take both the hands backwards like this and try to lock the fingers at the back. That is Uttar Bhutmasana. So that's the second level. Then inhale, release the hands up and exhale to Samasthiti. So these are the asanas which will come in advanced uh, class in addition to those two forward bends. So in the regular class, after Jana Shisha, Parivartha Jana Shisha, we will go to Ushtrasana. So from Samasthiti, Egan, inhale, fold the legs. Anyone say? On the exhale, sit Vajrasana. Take two breaths here. <clears throat> One. Two. Then inhale, stand up. And exhale, bend back. Touching the heel. And arching the back. Three breaths here. Looking at the eyebrow, one more. Three. Then inhale, stand up. Exhale, sit. Inhale, sit to the other side. Okay, before that, we'll do Balasana. Inhale here and exhale, lie down Balasana. Sit up. Exhale here. Inhale to one side, sit and exhale. Samasthiti. Then Makrasana. Inhale, bend I'll show you this leg. Exhale, bring the left arm to the right thigh. Catching the toe. Then pushing to the back, three breaths in this position. One, two. In senior batch, I mean advanced batch, you will do the binding. I will show this side. So here, I twist in the same way. Instead of catching the toe, I will take the hand back like this. Rotate the hand and take it back. 
and catch it with the other hand from the back side like that so that is called marichi asana marichi c so this binding of the hand in here release exit samastiti so that completes sitting asanas one more asana asana sitting position akarna dhanura asana samastiti hold show the right leg we can inhale hands up do exhale bend forward hook the toes carry the heeling pull the leg like an arrow try to lift it and bring it towards the ear like that try to touch it on the ear bring it to our toe the blood is will stretch chatwadi pancha inhale Do the other side. The same pra- asana goes to the other side. That's called arrow posture or akarana dhanura asana. It's like an arrow, pulling the leg and shooting it forward. We have done it three, four months back. So that is akarana dhanura asana. So these are the four asanas, including the uh, uh, in uh, your uh, this one advanced class. You have got additional patma asana and tor asana. So from Sanasi, I'll show that also. Then I'll go to the supine asanas. Here you come. Inhale, fold in one leg. Patmasana. Do you exhale for the other leg. So, cross legs. I mean, Patmasana. The exhale. In the hand, this position. Exhale. Place your hands down. Inhale. Lift your body in bed. Like that. Tolasana. One. Two. Three. Exhalation. Inhale. Unlock the first leg. Exhale. Unlock the other leg. So in the uh, advanced class, we go to. Uh, Directly to the Padmasana, and that series will come. In uh, that, I will come later. I will show it later. Then, so any doubts on the sitting asanas which I showed now? What are they? Jana Shirsha asana, Parivarta Jana Shirsha asana. You have uh, Ushtra asana and Vakra asana, and Akarana Dhanura asana. Any clarifications? No sir. Okay. You go ahead for Subha Masnas. So we will do the Prasad Yoga, Sarvanga, Hala, Sukta Krama, Sarvanga, Tarshe Kapada, Marta Dasna. Then comes to back bending. So I will quickly show some of the timing. I will not be spending too long. <coughs> उर्दू में सहेला
Setelah itu Tambah berat Tell the next day I support the back Now in the morning I will open the next So I cannot do that here So I should lie down in the other direction So from the last one Support in the back, spread the legs Supta konas Cast the toe. <clears throat> One more breath. Take the full arch in here. I support the back. Exhale, come back. Then inhale, come to the lung. On the exhale, left leg up. Sideways. Two breaths there. Inhale, come back. <clears throat> Exhale. Other side. Two breaths here also. Then inhale, come back. Exhale, hips on the floor. Now, I cannot do this side, so I have to turn again. <clears throat> So I was in this position. Then inhale, take arms over there. <clears throat> Exhale, put the left leg down. Here, I put the left. Then inhale, spread the arms like this. <clears throat> On the exhale, take the right leg to the left hand. Markadasana. Then move to the other side and breathe. Here there is no space, that's why I'm bending the hand. Otherwise, I should be straight. One more breath. <clears throat> then inhale, come up. <clears throat> Exhale, let down. And the same side, same way, the other leg also go to Markadasana. Then after returning, Exhale, let down. And inhale there, Exhale, hands down. That completes the sequence of inversion. All the, I think, five or six asanas will come. In the advanced class, class, the same sequence comes with a little difference. There, the Patmasana will come. <coughs> so here, after that, Tolasana comes, right? From Tolasana, once you land and then take an exhalation, inhale, you go up directly to the Patmasana. Like that. <clears throat> then stay. That's the Yoga Bhutmasana. Exhale to Pindas. Those of you who can wrap the arms, have a it. That's how Pindas. Then inhale, bring the Padmasana parallel to the ground. On the exhalation, unlock your legs. To the last. And then same way, you will do the uh, uh, Sutta Konasana also there. But the difference is that from Sutta Konasana, you will come to make the Padmasana from this. So we will show you that. From the advanced people. So you are in Sutta Konasana, from there, you may come to Mirudandasana Okna. Looking at the sky. So Mirudandasana will come. Finish that with the inhalation. 
and exhale back. Then inhale, support your back. Exhale, jump. So that sequence goes for the advanced class. And when you will come back to Sarvanga Asana, there is one new Asana in your advanced class which is called Parsha Sarvanga Asana. Those who are there in the class. With you now. So in Parsha Sarvanga Asana, after you reach back from your Sarvanga Asana position, with the support of one hand, you will take your Sarvanga Asana to the side. It's called Parsha Sarvanga Asana. It's all different Asana. Inhale, come up. Exhale to the other side. Taking the hand support. Inhale, come up. Exhale. Then everything else is the same. So that's the new asana which will be there for advanced class. That's called Parsha Sarang Asana. You search in uh, Google, YouTube, and all you will find that asana. It is uh, taken from the book Light on Yoga by BK Sahendra. Okay? So that finishes the inversion. Any clarifications on all the inversions which I demonstrated now, including the regular batch, advanced batch. So these advanced asana, some of them will be in the children batch also. Sir, Parshva Sarvangasana, if you do it, then your weight will be completely on your left hand, right? Left hand, which is on that button. On the left side. Yes. Okay. It will be majority, mostly 90 percentage will be on one hand. And you are putting the weight on that side, actually. Yeah, you are actually twisting and arching into one direction like this. Okay. In normal, we do only with one leg. Here, both the legs go. Parshva Ekapada Sarvangasana. Yeah, one leg goes. Ekapada, here both the legs. Both the legs. This is both the leg Parsha Sarvangas. It's a new asana. I don't know. Some people who are there in the advanced class, they should be able to know that. Okay. Yeah. Thank Good. you. Thank you, Sayur. Then Marakata Asana. Then comes Matsya Chakra Pavanamutta Sarvangasana. So I'm going to quickly go through that. <coughs> we start with Samasthiti. Ekam inhale, insert the arms. <coughs> and exhale. So you can see the entire body is resting on my arm. It's no, buttocks are not touching the ground at all. Buttocks are on the hand. Then the inhale, lift the upper body. See the entire lift comes. On the exhalation, here itself the bulk starts. Like that. Actually, the head doesn't take much weight only. That's the bulk that has to come. See, the head is actually free. And it's just place to get that stretch. Keep on moving like that. Finally, inhale, head up. Exhale. Inhale, arms out. And exhale. Directly inhale. Exhale, point your toe. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. <clears throat> One. Seniors, I mean advanced class, beginner class is not there. First, one leg up will come. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. <coughs> Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale here. 
and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Chasma, random breathing. So that is the sequence for advanced and your regular class. So in advanced class, that ek baada, ek hasta, all that will come. In the regular class, all the chakras will come. In advanced class, after this, standing up, drop back, that will also come. So that standing up, dropping back, how to do that? Minimize the distance. See how I minimize the distance. They come like this, and so the hip goes in front of the leg. Then the hands are closer. You can inhale and lift up. So the arch is full and full. Then with that. So how it came up? Oh, so can you repeat that? Can you do that once more? Uh, I mean. Yeah. So from here, so it's tough. Okay, be careful. All these techniques I have just by experience only. So from here, instead of keeping the hand here, I go a little down. Okay. Keep the heel and the knees are in there. Okay. So there. Then I keep the hand down below the shoulder. So the arch will become a little intense. I mean, it will increase. So here, lifting is tough. So the arch is a little more closer in Jagrasana. And then the weight shifts to the leg. So that I was trying to hold and come. So shifting the weight to the front is the key for standing, standing from into chakra, into stand, standing from chakra. Same way, the push. See all these back bends, even if you say Ardha Chakrasana, more than bending backwards, the middle has to move forward. So get that in mind. So here, this push is important. Not this one. So I push. You saw that arch. You got it. See the leg is here, the hip has gone forward. Okay. Like this. Then it's easy. And slightly then bend the knee. Like that. So get, then getting that push of the hip is important. So that push is what okay, that push pushes not there, one will fall back flat ah, on the yes. okay. So the because weight is fully on the back. There is no counter weight in the front. You got me. So the counter weight of the front is important. Is my head visible to you? Head is visible? Yeah. Okay, now I think. <laughs> okay. Sir, for me the whole body is visible. Ah, whole, ah, very good. Thank you. Come on. No thumbs up, huh? don't do thumbs up. I'm not seeing you only. Okay, then, so standing up and drop back is done. Now, uh, after that, we come to uh, Pranasanas, Shalanasana. So, before that, I think there is a uh, uh, Inshalabhasana once again. So, Asana. Yeah, then we do Paramuktasana, very simple. No? Paramuktasana, everybody knows. From the position, <coughs> inhaling, bend the leg. And exhale. See, my head goes away. You're going to have a filling lungs. One more. Upper chest is filling. Now.
Her beş ayı lazım. Last one. Then inhaling turn to one side. Interlock, see the gap. Elbow very very close, not like this. Very very close elbow and then I roll down. So the stomach will not touch the mat in full shavasana. It will be tight and all the hand. With the inhale, I lift both the legs up. Then try to breathe normally. Then exhale. Then inhale the knees. So in shallow asana, we don't do big breathing. We do shallow breaths because the lungs are, I mean, the chest is tight, the stomach is tight, everything is tight. So it's very difficult. So this is the shallow asana we are. The, uh, normal class. Now we will do the advanced class. Well, you need to take the help of your family for doing that. So this is for the advanced people. Yeah, right now. Yeah. No, first to do this one. No, first to do some chakra or something. First to say to one person. No, first to say to one person. So I'm just going to show you uh, how that in advanced class you have to do that chalabhasana. Take few breaths there. Hmm. With an exhale, bring the arms behind, besides the ears. Inhale, look at the chalabhasana. Take few breaths there. And finally, inhale in the position. Exhale, come down. Inhale, release the legs first. And exhale, bring the hands down. Inhale, right arm over your head, bend your left leg. Exhale, turn around. Inhale, stretch your arms. Exhale, stretch your legs. Again, take an inhalation. Exhale, bend your, bend your hands down. Inhale, interlock your palms below your body. Exhale and be ready. Now she is ready for full shalabhasana. So, uh, so you have to have, take the help. Ideally, you are supposed to do it on your own, but initially it may not be possible. So, I am going to show you how your family member should help you. So, lift your legs up. Give me one leg. Give me one leg. Take the other leg on your own. Yeah. So, this much you have to come. Is all this? So, this is the starting point. So, you can, you can stay here also, no problem. So this is going to full shalabhasana. Then those of you who can, so your family member should support your thigh like this. And then stay a little time. If possible, just gently bend the legs. This is our advanced class, not for the regular class. Okay. So this is enough. Then inhale, come up. Then just exhale. And your family should help you to bring your leg down. Okay. Just relax in Matarasana. Inhale, take your arms. Just relax. So this will come in your advanced class. So individually uh, with your own strength, you may not be able to reach. So I am not showing that. It's, it's, I do it like that. But you have to do, call somebody and take their help to do that asana. Yeah. You can uh, go to Bala asana first. Then go. And then, so Shalab asana is over. Then the last asana in your sequence is Ekapada Raja Kapoda asana. Now you can go. Thanks. So from there, from Atarasana, we finish Shalabhasana here. Good night, Rasana. Inhale, press the palm to the chest. Exhale, come together. Inhale, come to cat. Exhale here. Now, inhale and fold the left knee between the hands. Fold it. On the exhalation, you have to sit. I'll show this side so that you can see that.
So the thigh has to touch down, and the leg is outside, so that you leg is out. It's not below like this. This is not the way to do that. So keep the leg outside the thigh, like that, and try to straighten your back as much as possible. Seniors will go to back bending. So I'll show the other side. So this is Ekapad Raja Kapodas. Two breaths here. <laughs> See the bulge of the chest. One. Chest is like a pigeon. Then inhale, arms over there. <clears throat> One more breath. Keep on chanting. Now, in advanced class, in addition to this, the front has a couple of us now in the cup. So from here, I bend the leg. Catch it from the top, and then with normal breathing, I touch to touch the head on the feet. Normal breathing here. Inhale, leg down. Exhale, hand down. Inhale, lock. Exhale here. Then goes to the other side. So that's called Ekapada Raja Kapodasana. Then you relax in Balasana. Uh, Normal breathing. Then we will sit up. So back come uh, from here. You should not do much of back bending now. Okay, except maybe that Bhushti Kasana which comes. So that back bend is reversed in this Balasana. Then in the regular class we do uh, Parvatasana, which is known to you. All of you know that, know that how to do Parvatasana. Then. Uh, Once that uh, in uh, your class, this one, your uh, uh, class, we have many classes after that, and then comes the class now, which is the class now. So after the class, I have shown in some classes. <coughs> here, here. Exhale, keep the head down. Come. Inhale, insert your elbow. <coughs> Exhale, walk the legs. Inhale, lift your upper body. Lift it. Then normal breathing. Exhale, come down. Inhale and exhale. So that comes uh, this one, Mayurasana. Which is there in advanced class? Then, in uh, regular class, you have Bhakasana as an advanced asana. So, which is I think most of you do that already. You can use the bricks actually to do it, or without the bricks also fine. Bricks will give good height. Any of any people from the children class? So, children class, many of you are jumping. So, in the Bhakasana, there is no jumping. It's only just. Lifting. So keeping the body down. This is the last asana of the normal batch. Keeping see the arm to just come almost on the knee, and the buttocks. Then I lift the heel up like that, shifting the weight on the arm, and then putting the weight to the front, one leg up, and gradually take the other leg up. Normal breathing, gazing on the floor. Then. Exhale, come back. Take two breaths there, and then we go to Vijay Pilasna, which you, which is not in the regular class, advanced class. So that any doubts on Pilasna, otherwise we are going to the Pranayama that we are going to do this month. 
the one doubt on the raja kaput asana right which all pa- which all parts of the body will touch the ground uh, is it the thigh or the knee or the leg yeah when you keep like this the imagine this leg is on the ground so this part of the calf muscle this part of the thigh and the other uh, quadriceps will touch so when i bend like this i remove the calf muscle so when i stretch you can see this thigh is touching mm-hmm. this bottom of the calf this calf muscle bottom that will also touch so okay. this thigh bottom bottom thigh calf muscle bottom and this thigh bottom all these will touch the ground like that so all this area is in stretch you got it got it sir okay yeah so try not to sit like this if you do this you not get proper balance also so keep your leg out outside the thigh so the bottom of this bending thigh should be touching the floor any other clarification so we have done with that then we we'll speak about pranayama in pranayama this month it's bastrika and vibhagiya pranayama sectional breathing the little change i have made in uh, vibhagiya based on suggestion of some people so little change that's all otherwise things are the same in bastrika it is chest breathing thumb into the palm all the four fingers wrapped around the thumb back of the wrist on the thigh it's a chest breathing chest up <clears throat> then no j sorry so that's the way so so, so some people do only shoulder like this that's wrong because there is no expansion happening on the chest so the chest has to move the shoulder will only support it primary movement is on the chest so then beyond that shoulder in, see this is extra not a bad this is enough so in the first feeling that the sri guys are doing this is not the sri guy is only shoulder exercise so the chest has to rise similarly don't move the other body parts like this so i am saying these are the things which people are doing i have noticed people doing all that so don't move your chin up chin down there's nothing else moves the chest moves and collapses the back doesn't even flex much the action happens only for the extent of the chest coming up Similarly, don't arch your back. Don't do it like this. Like some people do this. So that's not going to it will only damage your back bone because it's arching and flexing unnecessarily. The arch will happen only with the extent of chest, chest lifting. That's all. So that's bastrika. It's also called belly breathing. These are uh, and don't do J while you're sleeping. Like you start coughing. <coughs> See, I already irritated my throat when I do that. So never do that. The sound will come from only from the nose. That's it. Okay. And there is a speed. Okay. Whatever possible, do if possible, max the speed. Any time you can stop, and any time you can restart also. After the sleeping, we do. Uh, This one, Vibhagya Pranayama, and then Brahmari Pranayama, and lie down. In Vibhagya Pranayama, slight change this month is first we do stomach breathing. You saw the stomach movement. You can see the sideways. And keep this hand. Just stomach coming out, going inside. so what happens the lower lungs is coming out so it expands the lungs bottom when you do uh, adhama shrasna the second one we do is uh, madhyama shrasna so this time we are trying it's little change 
just to get that, you know, some people suggested this might work better. So let me try that this month, then we'll decide. Based on your feedback, we can roll back also, nothing wrong with it. So the second one will be thoracic breathing. So this time, instead of keeping the fingers behind the neck, we keep it on the ribs, just on the bottom part of the ribs. So that we can feel the expansion of the middle of, of the thoracic uh, lungs. So the, the hand has to lift up. So I'm not lifting the chest upwards. So I'm lifting this area. Expanding. Your elbows doesn't go back. Little. Extend that your ribs over. You don't have to push it like this. It is just to get the feel of uh, uh, the rib opening. Expands. So let me try this out if it works better. Otherwise, we may implement the previous one. It works more on the upper chest and not sure about the bottom but, chest. But when you do like that, your uh, chest comes up, right? Like this, huh? Yeah. No, it expands uh, the ribs. So I'm supposed to expand it like this. Sideways. Yeah, the ribs should open sideways. Okay. That's the thoracic breath. And the final one will be upper lungs breathing. So here the chest comes up. Sir? Yeah. yeah. Sir, in this, if we press palms little on the ribs, yeah. then the expansion is good. Okay, yeah. Uh, there are really right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, can you come on the uh, this one? Like, uh, can you show it? Or is it possible? Are you there? No. Yeah. Is she visible? Yeah. No. Let's Sir, I have joined through phone. I think. Uh, your video is not visible, but I think. Yeah. Can you open the video? Oh, yes. I'll pin you to the first screen. Pin to the pin on the first screen. Uh, now you can, yeah. Can you show it once? Uh, if it's possible, if you're able to. Yeah, you're not visible. Yeah, sir. Only if we press it when going back. Okay. Then expansion is better. Okay, so you, uh, you will move the elbows back. Yeah, like we do in loosening practices, now, sir. Uh, standing loosening, like. Okay. So you uh, you suggest that the elbow should move back and the chest should expand. Little pressure on ribs. If we press it, then expansion is better. No. The only thing is, people should not arch the back and push it forward. That's the only thing they should not do. Just a little. So that's good idea. So we'll try to do it like that. So as she as Raymo also suggests, we'll try to keep the hands on the ribs and like Sridhar said, just expand a little the uh, elbow to the back and bring the, the ribs sideways and expand it. So that will come into your uh, uh, center thoracic breathing. We can compare how it works. Yeah, yeah, no issues. <laughs> okay, we'll do like that. Uh, how do I unpin you? Yeah. Now you can see me, I think, yeah? right? So that comes into uh, your Nibraji Pranayama. And then the last Pranayama is uh, Brahmi, which you have all done. So just keeping the fingers. So your, your index finger goes to the eyebrow, the middle finger on the eye, the ring finger on your nasal cartilage, and the little finger just above the lip. And then the thumb closes the ears. <clears throat> then the humming sound. 
So you, did you notice the length of that humming? So oh, that comes with proper inhales. So I've seen many people they finish it too quickly. So it should go at least around 20 seconds. So that you get good volume of your breath. The the tidal volume, the volume of the breath you take in, should be good. So that you get that prolonged sound. And this is done self. So because you cannot hear others, no, your eyes are closed. And after uh, seven rounds, you lie down. After Brahmari. One important point in Brahmari is that don't keep the teeth together. Teeth will be little. Two of them, one or two of them apart, and the tongue. The tongue will touch the up, the bottom of the upper teeth, the palate. Like when you say the letter N, N, mm, but the mouth is closed, mm, like that. So the teeth will not touch, but the tongue will touch the upper upper part, upper palate. So that you do seven times round. Yeah, in Om Kara we say Ma. Here it is N. The mantras. Are the ones that calm the mind. All the mantra. I have been observing lot of people. You Now those who are doing with lot of calmness in the mind, their mantras are very good. They will try to learn the mantra. And some students they are not at all interested in mantra. I don't know why. So I, it's unless there is some religious. They are not chanting Om Om. No Surya Namaskar mantra. They are not interested to learn the pranayam mantra. No starting prayer, no ending prayer, nothing. Only exercise. So this is where you now see. I want you to correct all these things gradually, gradually. Come to the the correct techniques of hatha yoga. Om ka. See, there is no patience to take an inhale only for Om ka. So when I say take a good inhale. See how that slowly dying down. And when I did that, literally I actually slowed down. Everything in the mind, the nerves, everything calm. Literally, I'm telling you. So this is what you have to experience. I'm not saying that everybody has got the same lung capacity. More than that, the technique is the lungs are all the same. Not much difference. When you're doing so many asanas, ushtas, so many asanas are happening. Your ex expansion of the lungs will happen. Your breath will be good. So just put a little more mind so when you take inhalations, when you do the omkara. Have some patience. Anyway, you're dedicating. One hour, fifteen minutes for the class. So dedicate that into full uh, with full mind. All the omkaras are pranayamas. I tell in all the class, many classes. Every om is a is a gift to calm the nerves. Or automatically the breath, the breathing rate, the heart beats, the stress levels, all these will reduce when you do omkara. And I think somebody was talking. Yeah, can you speak? Somebody had a query. No, I was telling that in Omkara we say Ma, whereas here we need to say Nakara N. Yeah, N, correct, Sridhar. Right, yes. So here Nakara comes in Brahmari Pranayam. So keeping that tongue upper, like telling the letter N, Na, like that, mm, like that. Think little upper. That's in Brahmari. Then the closing prayer of this month is uh, Ananta Sansara, that uh, mantra. So before that, any other queries? Anybody, please speak up so that I can reply. Well, as we do the closing prayer, so oh, come. So, yeah. So, if nobody has anything, I just have one question. I mean, I've been wanting to go from Agni Sara to Nali. Mm -hmm. I mean, I attempted, but mm -hmm. what happens is, I mean, the abdomen it moves slightly, but I feel as if the body is also moving slightly, as in the mm -hmm. rotation isn't just in the abdomen; it's the body is getting involved. So, mm -hmm. is it a problem with practice? Will it come with practice, or is the technique wrong? Uh, no, see, uh, one is that your exhalation should be complete. 
So ensure that your exhale is full and you know, fully uh, uh, free. The air, everything is out. Sorry. See me? Where nobody? Jai Khan, Doctor Jai Khan. Good. Sorry, one second. One second. Put it on phone. <coughs> yeah. So uh, the uh, 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 as I said, the exhalation should be full. And before going into that rotation, what I want you to do is get the breathing early first. So before going into rotation, what you should do is try to bring the stomach to center. So uh, I can show it once to you. Just observe. I mean, if I pull from both sides, the stomach comes to center, right? Uh -huh. uh, you have to start from both sides. I hope you can see me. So if it's in the center, I, I, uh, what do I do after that? I mean, it. So you have to bring it center first. Okay. Once you get that center pick, then the rotation starts. Okay. Hmm. So light is there. I've shown you this many classes. Yeah, 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 I got it, yeah. Okay. Sorry, it was visible. So bringing to the center and then moving it. That's called the noli. Noli means wave. So the churning. So first is to get it here, that breath, so abdomen center. Then you will start moving. So unless you get it in the center, you will start moving. So that's called madhyama noli. First get madhyama noli. Then actually all the things will come. Okay. So first try to get it there. If you're getting it, fine. Then go ahead, start trying to rotate. Okay. The placement of the hand, you know, so that I was applying a little shifting of the force on the thigh. So I was doing that. Little place and pressure I was using. Okay. Yeah, I think if you do that, it will come. Okay. Okay. That's not Okay. And then any other query? Otherwise, we close for the mantra. <coughs> Samastiti, sit back straight. The arms over the head. Exhale, heart center. Center of the heart, especially children. Don't keep the lips and all. And then, closing the eyes, take an inhalation. Together. अनंत संसार समुद्र तारा नौकायिताभ्याम गुरु भक्ति ताभ्याम वैराग्य साम्राज्य द पूजनाभ्याम नमो नमः श्री गुरु पादुकाभ्याम नमो नमः Sri Guru Paduka Bhyam. Full in here. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Gently bow down, thank God for the practice. And come back. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर